Welcome to the Ask a Swim Pro Show. My name is Ferris Savetti, co-founder and CEO of My Swim Pro. In today's episode, we're talking about how to make a swimming comeback after the quarantine. So thank you so much for joining me from around the world. Let me know in the comments where you're joining me from and what the current pool situation is like. And I'm going to go ahead and read out the comments. So I want to thank everyone for joining me. Thank you from Venezuela. Hello from Brazil, from India. Welcome from Washington, D.C., from Los Angeles, California. Fantastic. Thank you for joining me. Today we're talking about the swimming comeback after the quarantine, after the lockdown, after the shutdown. I will be honest with you guys. The other day, uh, just two days ago on Memorial Day, I went for my first swim in three months, right? Three months. I didn't go swimming for three months and I got to go in open water swimming Lake St. Clair. It was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed it. It was really, really fun. All right, let's get a couple more shout outs. So let me know in the comments where you're coming from and give me a status update on if you're allowed to go swimming, like all are the pools opened yet? Um, you know, it, can you go open water swimming? What is the temperature of the water? Let me know what your current situation is like. And I'm going to go ahead and read all of the comments. Hello from Algeria. Hello from Singapore In Peru. The pools are closed. Um, in Sweden, the pools have been open, but we haven't gone since January. Okay. We have Max joining from Ukraine in Britain, just working out with Dryland. Thanks for the update, Adam. In Maryland, uh, hello, hello from Maryland. Tomorrow night, we open up a little bit more and outdoor pools can open with social distancing. Um, what does that look like? And the big question, my pool is indoors. So many questions. Yeah, social distancing is tough. You know, you got to make sure you keep six feet, two meters away from anyone at any time. Uh, let me know in the comments what your pool situation is like. In Kuwait, we're in full lockdown. You can't even step outside the house. Woof. That's tough. In Ohio, the pool I go to is open today, but summer season is canceled. In Venezuela, pools are closer. All the places are closed. In India, just working out in dry land. In New York, we are still closed because we have the most cases in the country. Yeah, my heart goes out to you in New York. Uh, 21 Celsius here. Okay, all right. Well, 21 Celsius is pretty, pretty warm. Kara, what's going on? Uh, hello from Iceland. The pools are open and we are swimming all together now. I'm so happy. Woo! Everyone, give a huge shout out in Iceland. There we go. Pools have been opened. Um, Najib, uh, what's going on? We are all still waiting for the pools to open in France. Um, Adam says, I am so unfit doing dry land. My fitness has dropped a lot. Yeah, it's difficult. You're not going to get the same thing if you're doing dry land versus swimming. I, I will be with you on that one it's definitely a different different element so uh next stop iceland michelle yeah let's go let's get on i don't know traveling right now is not international travel is not looking very good um hello from florida venezuela is all closed um i want to move to iceland now yeah i know right i mean in iceland to have everything open that's like that's crazy so i'll give you guys a status update on myself so i live in uh, Metro Detroit in Michigan in the United States of America. And it's pretty different everywhere in the country. United States is geographically very, very large. And so here in the United States, some states, if every state's a little bit different and every community is a little bit different. So in some areas, the pools have completely opened up. You know, you can, it looks pretty much like normal, nothing different. Where I live, uh, majority of things are still closed for a few more weeks. Um, but where I live in Michigan, there's a lot of lakes. So we actually have in Michigan more freshwater coastline than any other state in the country, in the United States. So we really have a great opportunity to go swimming in open water. And that's, you know, it hasn't been, hasn't been closed. So, uh, you know, I got my first open water swim in two days ago. I did just over a mile. Stay tuned for a video that we're coming out, two videos next week open water swimming tips for beginners. And I show like a workout of the week. So that's really fun. All right, let's get some shout outs here. Let's see what's going on. Uh, Arena or Speedo? Hey, they're both great brands. How was Ramadan? It was Mumtaz. It was very good. Happy Ramadan. Uh, happy Eid Mubarak. Okay, so let's go through some comments and see where people are coming from. Orlando will open pools next week. Okay, okay. Como estas? Uh, bien, bien. Um, let's, let's see here. Who are we talking on Facebook? What's going on guys? All right. On, on YouTube, um, one has to swim alone outdoors, but I wouldn't recommend that. Yeah. Swimming outside, um, by yourself is, is nice. I mean, I would take swimming over no swimming. It's always fun to do it with other people. Um, where are you from? I am from Michigan, United States of America. Um, my family is from Syria. 
So, you know, we'll keep this in English, though, for all the fans. Okay, so the goal of this video is we're talking about making a swimming comeback. So thank you so much for sharing an update on what the current situation is like, <clears throat> excuse me, in your neck of the woods. You know, everywhere is different. We got to understand that. Most importantly, make sure you're staying active. Make sure you stay fit. Toi parle en français, anglais. Comment ça va? So number one, make sure you stay fit. Stay active every single day. Try not to take too many days off in a row, even if it means going for a walk, doing my swim pro dry land training, super, super important. Um, so make sure you're staying fit. And when it comes to making a comeback, okay, you got to make sure you think in the long-term perspective. It's not about how fast can I swim on day one? How far can I swim? Right? That doesn't really matter. It more importantly is, Try and figure out a plan, a good routine. We actually just did a whiteboard Wednesday on this on how to make a swimming comeback. So if you haven't checked it out on the My Swim Pro social media, please check it out. And make sure you're staying up to date on all the content we put out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. If you guys are on TikTok, if you guys are on TikTok, let me know. Like in the comments, be like, yes, I'm on TikTok or no, TikTok is stupid. Because uh, right now we're not broadcasting live on TikTok. We're only broadcasting on, on Instagram on YouTube, and on Facebook. So thank you so much for tuning in from around the world. Um, so, okay, let's do some more shout outs here. Uh, Palestine is opening next week. Dominica Republic, what's going on? Uh, no, Palestine's opening pools tomorrow. Guys, there we go. Um, there's only running and cycling and triathlon competition. There's no now. Yes, TikTok is cool. What's going on, guys? If you're not following us on TikTok, get on there. Omar. Nice work. Well, you're doing nice work. Thanks for joining us on Facebook. How you doing? All right, let's let's get a couple more shout outs for you guys. Okay, here we go. Oka says swimming pools in the Netherlands are already open. Guys, we're going to Amsterdam. The pools are open in the Netherlands. Let's do it. We'll go to Sprechen Sie Deutsch. Okay. Lorenza, come on, sus. What's going on? Can I have a shout out? Of course you can. Mia9925. Give her a follow. Um, what are we doing today? Okay, so today I'll, I'll try and keep it focused on the topic. We're talking about how to make a swimming comeback. And so step number one is staying fit before you even get in the pool. So it's really important that you're already active. You know, we do have training programs in the app that go from couch to 1K. So if you've been doing nothing, literally, you got to start out small. Don't worry about the distance. But I will tell you, like when I went swimming for my first time two days ago, it felt so amazing because... It was like three months of not touching the water. So even though my endurance was not as good, like, you know, I'm, I'm still in pretty good shape. I'm aerobically fit. I've been cycling. I've been doing the MySwim Pro dry land. Hopefully you guys are tuning in when I run the live workouts. But, you know, I felt like I'm in shape. You're still not going to be the same swimming shape, right? Because that feel of the water is something that it, it disappears if you don't swim for, for a little bit of time. So just understand that. You know, you are going to be a little bit, you know, rusty, but it doesn't really matter because you're not trying to go a best time. That's really important to have the right mindset. I think, I think above everything, when it comes to making a swimming comeback, it's so important to approach it from a long-term perspective because you're not going to go that fast. You're not going to go that far. If you were used to swimming five days a week, swimming 5,000 meters every single workout, you know, you, you don't expect to come back to that and to all of a sudden swim 25,000 meters on day one. It's just not realistic. It's, it doesn't make any sense. So instead, think about, you know, okay, day one, I'm just going to get in the water and I'm going to feel good. Like for myself, I swam 1,700 meters in open water. I had a wetsuit. It felt really good. I will be honest. I didn't swim it that fast. Like I was going pretty easy. My first few hundred meters felt fantastic. I felt like I had never taken any time away from the water because I was fresh. Like I wasn't, my swimming muscles weren't fatigued. So it was actually relatively simple to swim pretty easy. And then after a few hundred meters, I started to die a little bit. I got a little bit tired. I could feel a little bit of lack of rotation. I could feel like my lats were fatiguing. My arms were tired. I wasn't swimming with as good of a technique. My pull wasn't as strong. And that's okay. I, I sort of expected that. So I wasn't really concerned with the fact, oh man, I'm getting kind of tired. Like, oh, look at me. I've really let myself go. That was not it at all. If anything, I felt really um, humbled and uh, enjoyed the opportunity to get back in the water because it's something I hadn't done for three months. So if you guys are at that point where you're about to go swimming, 
it's really important to think about it, your mindset from that long-term perspective. You know, day one is just the first step of the journey. You know, they always say the first step is the hardest step. The first stroke in swimming is the hardest or the easiest if you're fresh, if you want to think about it from that perspective. But you're not trying to go for distance and you're not trying to go for speed. Okay, day one is all about, you know, being really, really easy, enjoy the water, take it all in and have fun. Okay, you know, you don't want to hurt yourself because if you try and do too much too fast, that's how you hurt yourself. And again, long term perspective, it's not about swimming, how much you swim in week one, or day one, or even month one, this is a long swimming is a lifelong activity fit, fitness thing. So you're never going to just stop you know, hopefully if you're in good health, you can keep doing it your whole life. So for that reason, when you take a long-term perspective and you think about it from the sense of, you know, day one, I'm going to get wet. Day number two, and it could be a week later, it could be the next day, it could be a few days later. Day number two, I'm going to, again, get in the water. The first few times you get in the water should just be about enjoying the feel of the water, the immersion that you have, you know, just take a deep breath and submerge, you know, use all of your senses, you know, smell the aroma of the lake, of the ocean, of the chlorine, you know, feel the water, taste it, you know, don't drink it, don't drink it. I'm not telling you guys to drink the water, but, you know, have the full, all of your senses activated when you go in the water. And the first few times, that's really all you're trying to do, whether the water is 15 Celsius, 25 Celsius, just get in the water, kind of absorb it, feel it for what it is. And then, Day number two, day number three, week number two, week number three is when you want to gradually start increasing your volume. So when we're talking about making a swimming comeback, again, the most important thing is long-term perspective. If you can't swim today, that's fine. If you can't swim next week, it doesn't really matter. Maybe it's next month or the month after. Whatever you're doing, take that long-term perspective and start slow. And as you gradually build up your volume, the rule of thumb and I want to thank everyone so much for joining in this live and, and being a part of this with all of us and sharing what the situation is like in your pool. Thank you so much for sharing. If you haven't already shared, share in the comments. But it's important to do 10 to 20% per week volume increase. So what does that mean? That means if you swim 10,000 meters in one week, the next week, you really shouldn't increase by more than 10 to 20%, which means 11 to 12,000. So if you swim five times a week, 2000 meters, just do the math with me, keep it simple. So that's 2000 meters every single day for five days in a row. And that's 10,000 meters. So the next week, when you're thinking about increasing your volume, you can either go to six times per week, and that would put you at 12,000, or you can increase your volume to up to 2,500 meters per workout. So that way, you know, one day you do 2,000, one day you do 2,500, 2,000, 2,500. And at the end of the week, you'll be at 11 to 12,000. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but the reason why you don't want to increase your volume on a weekly basis more than 10 to 20% is because your body will fatigue and it can't handle that. And that's how you will prevent, that's how you will injure yourself. So we want to prevent injury. We want to make sure that we're not doing too much and we're increasing the volume too quickly. So it actually feels, it should feel like that's too easy. It should feel like, oh, I can swim way more than 20% increase in volume per week. I can go, you know, 10,000 this week, 15,000 the next week, 20,000 the week after, and then 25,000 the week after that. And you probably could, but you're increasing the likelihood that you're going to hurt yourself. And not only that, you're going to decrease your ability to maintain proper stroke technique and fundamentals because really it comes down to the fundamentals, guys. It, it, it doesn't make any sense to just swim more and not have good technique. Like to, to truly increase your volume, you have to increase by a maximum of 10 to 20 percent per week. And really, that doesn't apply for the first week. So, you know, if day one, you just get in the water and you do 200 meters or you do like you know, a mile or, or you do like a thousand meters and you're used to swimming way more than that after week one, you know, then I would start to, to think about 10 to 20% per week. So week one, you're just getting in the water, you're having fun, you're swimming 500 meters, whatever. And the first week you swim 2000 meters, you know, that your body can handle more than that potentially because you've done 20,000 meters per week for your whole life or, or whatever that is. 
So the next week is when I would say that's when you start thinking about the volume increase of 10 to 20% per week. So week one, you swim 500 meters and you just swim easy and it's great. And it's like, Hey, high five people. I, well, I don't know. High five social distance. Right. So don't, <laughs> don't, don't, uh, don't break social distancing. Don't break the law. I don't want anyone breaking the law. And then week two, you're like, all right, now we're going to start like actual training. We're going to build towards something. We've got a goal. We're going to increase our distance. Fantastic. That's great. So increase your distance gradually. And from there, we're thinking about an increase in volume, 10 to 20% per week. So if you go, okay, week one, I'm going to swim 2000 meters. Week two, now we're going to do for real training. We're going to swim 8,000 meters. I'm going to do three sessions between two and 3000 meters per session. Then the next week is when you start to think about that 10 to 20% rule. So I hope that makes sense. Um, that's really the most fundamental thing when it comes to volume. Of course, the next tip for making a swimming comeback and really making sure that you're successful is to follow a training program. You know, it's one thing to just go for a swim and, you know, the first couple of days, you don't really need a training program. You can just go swimming and enjoy it and just have fun, get in the water, feel that submersion, what that feels like. That's fantastic. Now, what about day, day two or week two? Now I recommend you follow a training program. So in the My Swim Pro app, we have a lot of different training programs, you know, whether it's the couch to 1K, the get fit where you go from swimming nothing all the way up to 1500 meters continuously by the end of the six week program. It's amazing. That's actually the most popular program in the My Swim Pro app. We've got a, a technique boot camp. We have a beginner version, which is two weeks, all technique drills focusing on improving your form and efficiency. And then we have a four week advanced technique boot camp. So, um, yes, Mr. Teddy's in there. Thanks for the shout out. So we have a lot of different training programs in the My Swim Pro app. So if you haven't already followed them, whether it's Swim or Dryland, what, what are you waiting for? Go to the My Swim Pro app. And then final shout out to you guys, okay? If you're not in the My Swim Pro Facebook group, this is a private Facebook group. It has swimmers from all over the world. They're, they're using the My Swim Pro app, but most importantly, they're sharing their story, their journey. We have beginners in there. We have advanced swimmers. We have people from all over the world from different skill levels sharing their, and I bet you there's someone who lives near you in the group. You might even know some people in the MySwim Pro group. So go to Facebook. Uh, if you guys are on Instagram, I'll see you later. Go to Facebook, go to the group, type in My Swim Pro Global Community and join the Facebook group. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it. It's probably the coolest thing that we've got. Uh, someone asked about the My Swim Pro swag. So I've got a sword. Isn't this sweet? Check that out. My Swim Pro sword. Woo, woo, woo. And then I also have the, the t-shirt, the My Swim Pro shirt. So unfortunately, you guys can't get the sword. This is like limited edition, like CEO. Like you, you, you got to be like part of the company maybe to, to, to get your hands on this. But if you want the t-shirt, you can buy these on our website. If you need a link, just DM us, send us a direct message on Instagram or Facebook, or just, just reach out to us and we'll link you how to purchase the My Swim Pro swag. In addition to the t-shirt, we've got a hoodie, we've got a tank top, we have a shirt and a tank top that says no pool, no excuses. We've also got some different swag coming up in the line, uh, swim caps and things like that. So let us know if you need any of the links to buy the My Swim Pro swag. Again, I apologize. The My Swim Pro shield and sword is super special edition. Um, I've also got something actually while you guys are on the live with me, check this out. This is a My Swim Pro action figure and he can swim freestyle. Look at him. Isn't he sweet? Awesome. All right, let's get into the Q&A. Now that we talked about how to make a swimming comeback, I think to summarize, if you just joined the feed, thank you so much for joining. Let me quickly summarize what we talked about in the how to make a swimming comeback session. Step number one is to have the right mindset take a long-term uh, approach to this. And, and it, as you're getting ready to get back in the pool, try and stay fit, whether it's doing the My Swim Pro dryland training programs, going for a walk, going for a run, going for a bike ride, doing yoga, meditation, just make sure you're physically and mentally strong and ready to go. Once you get back into the pool on day one, week one, month one, it's not about your distance or how fast you swim. It's more important to think about just getting in the water and enjoying the experience and having fun. Once you get in the water and you've done it for a few days or a week or a month, then it's really time to follow a training program to make sure that you're progressing and you're building upon whatever it is that you started doing. If you follow my uh, training program in the My Swim Pro app on iPhone or Android, 
perfect. If you're increasing your volume on your own, meaning the distance that you swim on a weekly basis, try not to increase your volume by more than 10 to 20% per week. So if you swim 10,000 meters in one week, the next week, you should be really trying to keep it under 12,000. Then the following week, under 14,000, under 17,000, if, if that makes sense. So you don't want to increase your volume too fast because even if it feels easy, you want to make sure that you have proper technique and the fundamentals of your stroke are really good with efficiency. And then also you don't want to hurt yourself because if you increase that volume, you'll feel really good in the first week or two. And then eventually it'll catch up to you and you'll start to fatigue and that's how you get hurt. It happens later. You're not going to hurt yourself on day one most likely, unless you overdo it. So that's a summary of the, the how to make a swimming comeback. Let's get into the comments. I saw a lot of people join. I hope you guys are still on the feed. On Facebook, I saw Henry join, Tina, Amr. What's going on? Welcome to the live on YouTube. Sean says, luckily my pool goes back in two weeks. So just trying to stay fit until then. Excellent. Winter says, hello from Russia. All pools are locked by the 15th or 25th of June. I am from Turkey. Omar, what's going on? Turkey swimming champion. What's, what's up? Murhaba. All right, let's see Instagram who is saying hello. Lucky Connor, what's going on? How are you doing? Mia, we gave you a shout out. Um, Connor, 4385, huge shout out. What's up? All right, let me know what questions you have. All right, I'm going to look at the question box here on Instagram. Um, Tips for getting back to swimming. So um, that's what we've been talking about the whole time. So if you guys would like, go and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok. And this video will live on those channels. So it's not going anywhere. You can watch it again. Hello from Slovenia. Vid, welcome. Adam, is it too late to start exercising and working hard if I take a break while I was fasting? No, it's definitely not too late. So... You know, if, if you were fasting during Ramadan and now it's, you know, back to work and back to eating, uh, welcome back. Hope you had a great month. But it, it's definitely not too late. Like, remember, long-term approach. So if you're if you're swimming, if you're doing dry land, you're not going to just stop doing that at some point in your life. You're going to do it for the duration of your lifespan. So you're not going to, like, stop swimming or stop doing dry land at some point in your life. You're always going to do this. So it's really important that you think about it from the from the long term perspective. Like, yes, in the short term, you might feel like you're not as in good of shape as you were before. That doesn't really matter because you're thinking about it from a long term perspective. So day one, week one, just get in the water, do anything and then build a progression after that because you're building towards the long run. So where are you going to be in three months, in six months, in six years? Think really long term, and that's what you're building towards. So by staying fit and getting and taking it from that long term mindset, that's going to help you out a lot. Michael, what's going on on Facebook? What's going on? Same with Ireland, Connor. Yep, yep. Hello from Turkey. Marhaba, salam alaikum. All right, guys, this was fantastic. I really want to thank everyone. Hello from India. I want to thank everyone for joining this. Thank you so much for being a part of it. We really appreciate it. The My Swim Pro Global Community. Final shout out. If you haven't joined the My Swim Pro Global Community Facebook group, go to Facebook right now. I want you guys to leave the feed on YouTube and on Instagram. Go to Facebook and type in My Swim Pro Global Community and join that group. Tell us about what your goals are. We're going to help you do it. It's an awesome community. Hello from Sweden. Hello, Golden Francis. What's going on? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you again so much, guys. I want to see the, the numbers of the live go down because that means you guys are going to Facebook and you're requesting the group. Why are the numbers going up? Hello from Brazil. Stop the numbers from going up. Hello, if you're just joining, welcome, welcome. But I want you guys to go and join that group. I want you to go download the MySwim Pro app if you haven't already done it. What's up, Brian? And make sure you rate us five stars. We want to help spread the word. We want more swimmers to improve their performance and health. So if you want to really grow the sport of swimming and you love swimming, download the app, tell others about it, give us five stars, and make sure you join that Facebook group on uh, on Facebook, My Swim Pro Global Community. Until next time, guys, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Later. All right. Thanks, Instagram. I appreciate